Well, hey, this is Joe, and I'm east of Albuquerque, east of the Sandia Mountain in Cedar Crest, New Mexico. And we have here, we have the, the Winnebago Indian of my friend James Copeland. He's a fellow YouTuber. He's traveling around the country with a really high-tech Winnebago RV that's been restored, and we're having a lot of fun here today. Well, I'm out here with James Copeland. James, Hello. welcome to the channel. Welcome to New Mexico. Thank you, Joe. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. Well, so what are you doing out here in New Mexico? I am visiting one of my friends, and uh, we were actually college roommates, and he works here at Sandia National Labs, and so he said, uh, you know, I'm, I told him, once I get the RV done, he's going to be my first stop. So <laughs> that's why we're here. We're having fun and enjoying New Mexico in great. the summer. Well, great. Well, so this is a Winnebago, right? Yeah, it's a 1975 Winnebago Indian and uh, everything here is kind of as original as we possibly could recreate it so this is a new paint job the whole roof is is new and so it's been about over a year of work I mean the new tires gone through the engine wow. all that stuff so it's it's been a really big project but really excited to be able to drive it around the country and show people one the Winnebago and two some of the cool tech inside for a couple of the companies I work for I'd like to take a look at that because I noticed a little logo on the back yeah the this is is the Qgo Live logo and what Qgo Live is it allows you to go live from a cell phone to a radio station in broadcast quality so oh. it's used by a lot of radio stations in all sorts of markets for remote broadcast so you know in the past we would have had to have a big piece of equipment expensive stuff at both ends now it's all software based and it uses your phone that you already have in your pocket so the same technology used to make a phone call that sounds really bad we make it sound good and it's in broadcast quality well, let's take a look yeah so hop inside the uh, 1975 Winnebago and uh, a lot of it is original, not all of it, but the floor is uh there is one thing you might see right away that is not original this is kind of the new trend in rvs is to do the you know hardwood floors but uh you know i, I like it it's easier to sweep um the original shag that would have been in here basically required an in-house vacuum and that's what a lot of the rvs actually came with so yeah. um, but anyway i bought this in kansas and spent quite a bit of time restoring it the other thing the major project was the roof and so you can see from the inside everything above your head is actually new so everything from the air conditioner to the fans and all that good stuff in addition to all the windows too i had to go around and reseal um, all the windows clean them that took two days per window so that was another huge project but um, this is my home i'm a full-time rver and so it's uh, really cool to be able to go around see the country you know when i'm young and uh, enjoy everything it has to offer and you know it's like, kind of like the minimalist lifestyle if you will of full-time rving really appeals to me so uh, starting up here we have you know the driving compartment if you will um the, the seat swivels around and of course the the dog bed there the dog kind of gets to run the show around <laughs> so um but yeah this my mom made all of these curtains here too so you know my family is quite, quite involved in helping me with this project but i've got you know the cb radio and ham radio and all that good stuff um and gps as well so um could try to kept it as original as possible the previous owner put in this carpeting but um in here is the uh, galley if you will dining area uh, living room entertainment whatever you want um, kind of a, this is be the original bench seat style arrangement where it folds down and uh, and you can sleep people originally it slept seven if you can believe it um, and then this is the kitchen area and my very modified uh, TV oh, so yes, it's actually a flat screen in there but it does digital TV and everything I've got a converter box stuck in there and uh, yeah that's that's a <laughs> lot of fun so entertainment center with the radio I mean this is whole project I've kind of dubbed radio nomad because I do a lot of radio stuff obviously so we, we've got a lot, all those little touches there and I've kept the cabinets and everything original a lot of people paint these but I figured you know it'd be better to keep this original I did spray paint this this is the Coleman uh, original Coleman Coleman stove and oven and the uh, yeah pretty much everything was just working on in order I just kind of brightened it up a little bit and got the fume hood here as well so it the funny thing is this kitchen is bigger than the kitchen I had in an apartment that I was <laughs> renting so it's actually an improvement believe it or not um, this is an add-on fridge that the previous owner had put in but I just put some dry erase panels in to make it a little brighter nice. um, so that's kind of a nice feature and this is the crown jewel of the uh, entire operation here um, this is 
is the radio station slash hobby area slash uh, ham radio center, um, pretty much whatever you want to call it. But I, I've kind of created the classic, you know, 1950s radio studio tell, with the... Tell us about this. Yeah, okay, first of all, yeah, that thing. That is a tease made. It's a British thing where <laughs> apparently, so you've got an alarm clock that makes tea in the morning or coffee if you want. You can do like instant coffee or whatever. Or you can even just make hot water if you want to put it in like a pour over thing. So yeah, my, my friend gave that to me and it's like, if that is the most ridiculous thing you can have in an RV, I think, is a tease made. So I was like, why, why not? We, we better have it in here. So, um, yeah, here in the radio station, we have, this is original, like, 1950s paneling that I actually got from a dumpster. So this was free. And, uh, you know, repainted it a little bit. Um, but this is kind of a little bit of soundproofing. I have a rotary console here. This is a broadcast electronics um, rotary console. And in addition, I've got my computer and all that stuff for my regular work duties and then, uh, you know, even a microphone, WLHA, for um, my radio shifts, doing news every day, and, uh, and then a DJ shift as well. So all the radio stuff that I do, plus some ham radio gear, of course, for the radio nomad, uh, voltage controls, monitoring power, and all that good stuff. So a lot of, a lot of uh, equipment and technology packed in here. And then in addition, this is, um, you know, where I sleep. It's like a couch, too. And it's got the, um, basically, this nightstand. It's a vertical nightstand stand if you will so i got everything that you might need on a nightstand i have vertically so you old got the alarm clock all the alarm clock old baby ben so oh. if the tease me doesn't wake me up that well and then um i've additionally got all the controls for you know the air conditioning heater and an outside thermometer and looking at the humidity and all that stuff and oh the original water level gauge that still works uh, so i can cool. actually see those are just little light bulbs and a circuit board behind there so i can sit i say that i have a half tank of water and then the compressor and all that stuff Get some... the titan missile setup we love that and then back into the bathroom, standard uh, RV bathroom, but it's pretty spacious, honestly. You know, I've got a pretty big shower here. Um, I, I can actually walk in this closet. It's that, I mean, I'm, I'm only 5'5", five five, so, <laughs> but I can actually stand in there. And uh, that's pretty nice. That's but, pretty oh, and also, this is, they call this an RV chandelier, uh -huh, too, because yes. I hate dingy, dark RV bathrooms. So I was like, this is going to be nice and bright. So it, it definitely lights up at night, and that's really nice. So, and I've got a little accordion door here, too, that I can close it off and um, so separate out because it basically kind of has like four rooms to it you know we've got the this room here in the studio and i've got a curtain that i can close that off and then into the living room dining area and there's even one more curtain to close off the driving area and there's another bunk up there so i'm having a good time just going around visiting radio stations in this thing because that's kind of the main goal is to show hey radio different radio stations you know what technology we have to offer between um q go live and all the broadcast opportunities and uh seeing america i've been kind of seeing the state of radio stations in 2020 and beyond so hopefully this project will continue for a little while longer and because uh, really we're just getting started so what's it like traveling with a pet yeah it's definitely uh, exciting that's for sure and uh, different but uh, I think overall worth worth worthwhile um, this is Ash my Shiba Inu and he's about eight months nine months old now and uh, he definitely makes it uh, fun when we're going uh, you know on in the RV uh, one of the first things I do when I stop is to be able to take him on a walk because yeah. you know he needs his walks every day yeah. um, but it's nice to have a companion I think you know that's the biggest thing and a lot of our viewers have dogs so um, it definitely fits right in um, I do have a little camera so that I can watch him you know when I'm outside the RV or like uh, you know going in to run errands or whatever and that's just you know good for peace of mind make sure he's not like tearing up the couch or anything but also with the dog it kind of makes you paranoid about leaving things out because um, I do have a crate for him but oftentimes I leave him out because um, he's usually more comfortable anyway and um, usually he doesn't get into too much stuff but I do have to make sure that there isn't temptation for him <laughs> to start getting in biting things because he'll like to do that yeah. so uh, it, you definitely have to be kind of a you know a little paranoid about that but at the end of the day it's definitely worth it to have a little buddy on the road um, and he does great when we're traveling you know um, as soon as the engine turns over He'll go ahead and uh, fall right asleep. He'll sit and right on his little cushion over there. That's right. He's got his cushion or he'll slide around on the floor or he'll sit in the passenger seat. Um, but yeah, he's a puppy, so still a learning process. Yeah. Um, but it's always a fun one. That's cool. So um, I'm a big believer in vintage ham radio equipment. And believe it or not, to some people, this is vintage ham radio equipment. But to me, it isn't because it's digital. But um, if you're unfamiliar with ham radio or amateur radio, 
um, is a licensed hobby. It's actually the world's uh, largest licensed hobby, I think. And people from all over the world can talk to each other via radio. I have some antennas that are on the roof of the RV and a few more that I can unfurl into like trees and stuff. But um, it's neat because you can do anything from, you know, you can actually do AM, regular like AM where you're, you're talking um, and it sounds like an AM broadcast or you can do something called single sideband where it's actually more intelligible but it uses uh, but less bandwidth. And then you can also do CW. So um, this is a regular CW key. This is a Navy style, I believe, knob. And so if we're not transmitting right now, but that's CQ for like if I was calling a station. Yeah. I think I messed up there, but that's KD0ICP, my call sign. And so if I wanted to talk to someone, I might say CQ, KD0ICP, you know, kind of a repetition of that. Yeah. And then someone would come back to me, and then we'd have a conversation that way. And the, the reason that people are still using CW today is it punches through when nothing else will. Mm. So, you know, with ham radio, you can talk to people all over the world with less than the power of a 100-watt light bulb. So that's the crazy thing is that, you know, there's no infrastructure required. It's just radio to radio. And believe it or not, um, you can send email over this. So I'm actually working on getting my setup ready to where I could participate in the WinLink email program and uh, be able to do that. So there's yeah. just there's so many applications, um, be it radio teletype, um, be it voice, video, and even some of the groundbreaking digital modes where you can bounce signals off the moon. Mm. Um, there's kind of the sky's the limit with amateur radio. And uh, even making your own mesh networks using um, basic like routers that you have in your house and using them on ham radio frequencies, you can make your own internet uh, links essentially. Yeah. So they, there's a huge amount of stuff you can do with ham radio. So that's just another facet yeah. of like one of my radio related hobbies, if you will. Along with alarm clock T yeah, of course. and manual typewriters. Um, yeah, that's right. Yeah, alarm clock T, manual typewriters. <laughs> <laughs> Without a person's name, so listen, I'm so glad we got that straightened out, over. Oh, and you have a wall phone, I just noticed. Oh yeah, absolutely. So this is um, through my regular internet box. Oh. I actually have a regular landline. <laughs> so, you know, uh, what other crazy things can we get in this RV? <laughs> I love it. What are you reading? Indiana Jones on yeah, the last all right, crusade? I, I found this in a little free library and I was um, like, you know what? I don't know. Is this a kid's book? I'm you're on sure. your last crusade. Yeah, maybe. I'm on my last crusade. So I was like, you know, I think this might be something they sell to kids, but I'm going to read <laughs> it a, anyway. It's, it's a teen novel. <laughs> it's a teen novel. Whatever. We're going to have fun. You know, <laughs> sometimes you just need something light to read that's not very challenging. So we've got that. That's pretty cool. That's, uh, I love all, it. All that good stuff. So you're a blogger, right? I am. So I'm working on a, a new website. I have one that's on our company page for QGO Live about the restoration of this vehicle. So it kind of starts off from the beginning with, you know, how we got it and everything. But I'm working on a new website called Radio Nomad, and it's at theradionomad.com. And so that site's under construction right now. But I'm going to feature all my visits to radio stations um, and a lot of other cool little projects that I'm working on. So that's where that's all going to be housed, in addition to, you know, the YouTube channel channel that's all in the works for um, the actual you know analog video projects and everything so it's kind of just getting started with that um, leg of the journey but definitely working on getting the digital presence up and running um, as we kind of explore the whole idea of Radio Nomad. What's your YouTube channel? It is currently my current YouTube channel where houses everything is just James Copeland if you just search James Copeland and then Radio Nomad is the new one that I'm working on and the first video just kind of a little gimme that we have on there is a Super 8 film that I made um, back when I was in high school. So it's just kind of something I threw up there uh, and nice. see if people like it. Nice, thank you. Well, I absolutely love this RV. I love how you've restored it, and I love how you've put these more technologically focused innovations, especially focused around the radio station production. But you have something else to show me that I think the audience is going to be really interested in. All right, so... This is just a, a shop on this property, but uh, once you open the door, it's a little bit more than that. So I'll take you inside as I have set up a temporary makeshift television studio that uh, looks like it's the 1970s. So right here, this is a Sony AVC 3260, and this is an actual tube camera. So it's got one uh, Viticon tube, actually. Right. So it's just a smaller kind of um, video tube. And so that's inside here. 
And these would have been used in like schools, um, kind of teaching television production, um, especially like in the late 60s, early, early to mid 70s. And so students might work on projects with these cameras or just kind of learn like kind of the basics of switching and that sort of thing. So that seems to be kind of the scope of what these were used for. But that being said, they, they can put out some pretty good images if you've got a, a way to capture what video these are putting out. So I have two of these cameras and the other one here, well, I'm probably waiting to get a better tripod. <clears throat> I'm using this one basically for graphics purposes. Uh, yeah. So this is actually a 3200 um, and they're, they're going together in the same switcher which is providing them the same video sync signal. So this is just kind of some testing I'm doing with providing some graphics and then one main camera. And I could do it where I have two cameras and I'm switching back and forth. And in this case, I'm gonna be doing the switching myself. So I'll show you the actual video switcher. This is from 1968, so it's all Apollo era video equipment. And I just replaced all the capacitors in this thing and it works like a champ. Um, some of these faders are a little bit dirty, but that kind of adds to the, <laughs> the aesthetic, if you will. So um, this is a pretty basic switcher, um, about as basic as you can get. But you've got uh, up to four channels of input, uh, four different cameras. You can fade between them. You can also invert the signal from one of the cameras. So this is especially handy for doing old school graphics. So you type something out, you point a camera at it, and then you invert everything. That way you can actually have you know, the logo appearing white and the, the black will kind of fade away to where you can actually put a logo superimposed over something. So that's an old school, almost kind of like a luma keying technique. Yeah. And then in addition, you can also do wipes on this thing. So very basic wipes, we're talking like split screens, lower thirds, or um, like a box in the corner. Mm -hmm. And and when, it, when you're doing that, it's not like it's gonna shrink it up like a regular yeah. switcher today. You're gonna have to position the camera exactly how you want it to where it just has that corner image uh, or whatever. Yeah. And then you're just gonna have to manually kind of cut it over. And so it takes a little bit of setup to get used to, but um, this is a really very basic Sony switcher that would have been probably mostly used for like education, um, that sort of thing. But it does everything you need to do because it's going to sync the cameras together and, uh, and they're going to work together and produce you at least some sort of video imaging. And in this case, I'm simply capturing it on a USB capture card. So this is a composite video out from here. And then I'm just going to put it into like Premiere or OBS Studio or that sort of thing um, to get the audio. And then right now, I've just been using this little um, Samsung mic. It's a kind of temporary thing because when I'm doing audio production and video production in the Winnebago, I'll just use that main console and I'll have a mic output um, right there and so who knows I'll be able to do a live stream from the desert using a 70s video technology but one interesting thing with these cameras which a lot of people might not be aware of is you never ever want to point them at the Sun uh -huh. and I know Joe knows this but like that will just destroy it'll burn in on the tube yeah. and that's the big thing so I'm always like super careful even like studio lights too that can be really damaging as well so that's why those old-school video guys always you know rack focus and um, zoom out and uh, zoom in rather and they make sure they use the lens cap to cover it all up, but these are uh, really cool cameras and uh, C-mount lenses on everything. So if you can find a, a different C-mount lenses, you can actually um, swap them out and um, get different lenses going on them. So it's an exciting video project. I kind of just started working on, and we'll see where it goes. Very good. So if I wanted to actually get something in the shot there. The other thing I'm still trying to figure out is like, you know, focusing on the subject and everything like you know when I'm by myself it's a little bit tricky because if you're in a studio someone's gonna come in and they're gonna focus in on your eyes and <laughs> zoom back out and you're good to go but this is the zoom lens and then I also have a fixed 16 millimeter lens um, in, on this camera right now so that's you're not gonna be able to zoom in with that but you can do the regular focus and everything and aperture control all that regular stuff that you find but shockingly simple as far as the actual camera controls go you have like a uh, low light, high light, a very basic pedal still adjustment that you need a screwdriver to manipulate, and sync, and that's about it. So, all right, and I'll record this. The interesting thing about all of this is, you know, it's just stuff you find on eBay. So right. <laughs> that, that's the cool thing about, you know, the internet and everything um, and being able to get all the equipment working. So um, this is actually my first foray into black and white tube cameras. I worked with like some color tube cameras and that sort of thing over the years. But uh, it's really neat, re neat technology. And the cool thing about these two is 
the video that you get from these is really hard to actually create in post, like in After Effects or Premiere, that sort of thing. So that's why, you know, some more artists and stuff these days really like to mess around with these cameras, is the fact that you're getting an effect that is harder to produce digitally, um, especially if you have like a high contrast scene and say you walk into it, it actually looks a lot like the moon landing or something like that, when, um, be, be just because of the characteristics of a tube camera. So kind of what I'm thinking about is, you know, showcasing kind of old school tech and a kind of a new light because and especially use an older format to show people because it's definitely something that's different you know most of the time if you're seeing someone explain some piece of a technology they're going to be filming it with a modern camera but using something old school um, that's kind of one thing I enjoy is presenting stuff in kind of an old-fashioned format and keeping this technology going because not many people even today understand how NTSC you know television equipment even works anymore so it's kind of a neat thing to resurrect some of that old school technology and show people and maybe do some you know live streams even on the you know, modern digital formats with older technology that's going to be fun yeah i'm really looking forward to that <laughs> yeah so what i'm looking to do with this you know whole project going around the u.s you know, visiting radio stations seeing america it all kind of ties in i think with a project to um, you know, showcase America in a, in a slightly different light, uh, kind of old, old fashioned, if you will. But uh, in addition, with the video project, is to kind of explore some of my own interests in things like typewriters and radio and all that sort of thing. And it really just exposed more people to a whole new world of older technology. Because I think, you know, especially I'm interested in this kind of electronic technology, it's a bit eclectic. And uh, some people have an interest in it, and so I want to help people, you know, pass on what I've learned myself. And it's always uh, great to work with a community of people who appreciate that sort of thing. So that's just kind of what I'm trying to do, and and uh, see where it takes me. So looking at some of this equipment, I can't help but think that it harkens back to some of my formative years in the late 1970s in the U.S. Navy. I see, you know, PL259 connectors and RG6 and a lot of old analog broadcast uh, Sony cameras. So that's pretty cool technology that brings back a lot of memories for me. Well, thanks, Joe. And you know, part of the mission here is being able to preserve some of this technology because a lot of this stuff is just sitting in sheds, not being used. Um, you know, people don't know what it is even anymore. So maybe through sharing some of this stuff online on YouTube where people can access it, they can understand, you know, how this worked and appreciate the amazing, you know, video, audio technologies we have now today yeah. and then that's kind of what we're representing with uh, our product in QGo Live how you know that's on the cutting edge but I also appreciate kind of the more old school stuff as well yeah. and you know letting it be used because all this stuff I think it should be used and should be enjoyed by everyone that's fantastic and I appreciate you inviting me up here and showing me around your RV and the site you're at right now and Great luck on your trip. Yeah, and thank the you, James. Adventures Joe. that you're going to go on, and hope to keep in touch with yeah. you and everything. You know, thank you so much. Thanks a lot, James. You take it easy, and you guys, stay creative and have yourselves a great day. Bye bye. <laughs>